Okay, hello. So this is a bit of a project that I did. Um, I'm gonna sort of run through what it is. And basically, it's an implementation of A star, and it's got some extra features that make it different. And it uses um, so it uses like a ant colony heuristic that is pre-calculated, or in this version, it calculates. In, it's, it's got four. It's got different modes. One of them is just use the standard A star, and one of them is to use the is to calculate the ants, do what they do, and then the third one is you calculate A star again, but this time it takes into account the ant colony stuff. So the idea of it is it makes it more in, more efficient rather than um, making the path any better. It it sort of makes the number of loops that you have to run and the number of um, nodes that you have to inspect it makes that those numbers lower so here so we've got like our environment we can move around we've got our grid of nodes that be, this is the grid of nodes that's the environment inside it and they turn red where they can't be walked um, and then this is the start where it'll start pathing from this is the goal where it'll start pathing to and if we press the button you can see it generates a path and it'll find like the best path between start and the end and that's just standard A star that's doing that right now um, so if I pull this one up to be bigger so then the thing that we do so we've got our path though we can reset this drawing so that just resets the drawing it the path is then recalculated so if I save if you look on the right here I save out the stats of that path it says it's length 25 it's taken 128 iterations of the loop to, to form the path and it inspected 578 nodes before it reached that path. Then I run the ant colony stuff. So these are all these little white balls that are flickering around are uh, essentially simulated ants. They just they're only drawn as a Unity gizmo, just so that I could see them. They're not um, you don't really need to be there. They technically do move around, but it's not really necessary. You can see this. It's not really working amazingly well here, but it works better in some environments than others. This is um, just generating basically a patch. The larger the node is, the more um, the more ant colony heuristic is deposited on that node. So the the idea is that it would find the goal and they would generate a path between the goal and the start. So I'm going to reset it and run it again. So you see they just fan out from where they start, which is the start node, which is down here and then um, they try to find the goal. They don't actively run towards the goal, they have, they're uninformed, they just do things randomly, which is why you end up with these little things like this, where one of them will get caught in like a loop because it will choose a node, deposit heuristic on it, do that a couple of times, and then it'll choose its own node that it just touched, and then that'll cause like a feedback loop. Um, also, they get stuck in corners sometimes when they've pathed around themselves and blocked themselves in, but then each iteration the queue of nodes that they are tracking as ones they don't want to choose uh, is is pushed and popped basically uh, enqueued and dequeued with the current node that they're on and the last node is dequeued that they so they keep a trail of like five so they eventually get out of these times when they stop and that I'll call that done I mean in I would run it for like 20 40 seconds maybe so now we calculate a path and um, we reset the drawing to calculate a path. It's a different path, like, but it's not actually probably that much better. So, it's actually one longer. It's iterations, it only ran for 30 iterations, which is a considerable improvement. And it ran for 184 as opposed to 578 nodes inspected. Um, I, I don't see how that, that information actually translates to that in terms of visually, but obviously it's, it's kind of working. Um, so you can see it like creates a massive improvement because they're choosing the nodes that are um, they're choosing the nodes that the ants said these are the more favorable nodes like so it's checking fewer of them because it see it considers the ones that um, it considers the ones that the ants touched to be more beneficial so this is a different environment and this is for an uh, environment that's a copy of the double bridge experiment which you can look up which is like an ant colony experiment where ants will tend towards this side because they'll reach the goal and come back and reach the goal and come back so they if you think they're going up both sides equally by the time this one gets to the goal on this side it's 
not even going to be at the goal yet on this side so there'll be more pheromone deposited on that side um so i'll make a path get some stats and that is 28108395 so i'll now run some ant colony stuff and yeah so the problem mainly that we have is the ants are kind of agnostic to direction they'll just randomly choose something somewhere so what that means is if so like you can see here we're getting patches in the top where they're just choosing these nodes they're not like doing anything to say I don't like excluding them apart from having the tail of nodes that follow them like a queue which is literally a queue data structure of nodes um, that falls. So eventually, they could pr they'll probably just disperse themselves equally over the entire map, which is a problem, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to re reset the way it's drawn and then redraw the path and then save some stats. So you can see its iterations are far less. Its length is one more again. Its iterations are far less, 28 to, as opposed to 108, and its nodes inspected is far less. Because if we look at where it went, it's going to tr treat these. I don't understand how it doesn't treat those as equally good, but I think combined with the way I started was pathing already with its um, like checking the distance to the goal and the weight on the heuristic, it's like these are going to be considered way better than these because these are weighted more and they're closer to the goal, so it'll check them first and then they'll be the costs will be better as you get up here anyway. Um, if I reset everything and run it again, we'll see if we can get different. See this, if I just stopped it now, which I will, this should result in a, re a much better path. Um, yeah, so it only ran 33 times and I ran it for hardly any like pre-calculation. If I just uh, run it for a bit more, if this connects to the goal and causes these to become weighted up here, then it'll probably improve it even more. You see, we're still getting the like patching behavior up on the right side as well. If I run that, take the stats. Uh, as opposed to last time, we have got the same as the default path length. Um, 30 iterations, so it's actually one more iteration than... Wait, iterations two. Oh, that was me typing in the box, I was going to say. I typed in the box by accident. Yeah, so I mean, you can see the stats are slightly different. So that's basically what it does. Um, but yeah, the idea is like you use the knowledge of... Not the knowledge, but like the global meta heuristic of the ants and then um, use that to sort of inform the A star search. Um, a couple of the ways I'm, I would improve it, uh, the way that the pheromone is deposited now is just um, it's on, you just put an absolute amount, so like a flat amount each time you touch a node, where I would put a formula onto that with a, kind of like a curve, so it's easy to gain a little bit and hard to gain a lot, so it's hard to get to the top of uh, a maximum weighted node. And then I would probably decay it in the same way, where it's harder to lose the last little bit than it is to lose the first part that you lose. So like, there's a curve on it, so it's sort of like um, not quite going to just immediately fill up when loads, because the problem is loads of ants touch the same node within the same like iteration or like within a few iterations, and it fills up faster than you can decay it. And if you decay it at a faster rate, it will over decay and just like anything that gets touched like a few times will just immediately decay to zero. So you need to like curve it out, I think. Um, also, better tracking of where you've been by the node, by the ants. So if I keep the tail system that I've already kept, but then do for each of the like oldest nodes towards the newest node, I keep like a direction, like I say okay from index 4 to index 0 and then get all those directions and average them and then try and then based on that direction I can like weight the nodes that it can choose to continue roughly in that direction and that should um, should mean that the ants are more likely to continue out into the world as opposed to loop back on themselves when they reach a point where some other ant has traversed a little bit. Um, also giving them like an incentive to hit the goal. I did try like increasing the amount of pheromone they hit, they get, they lay, sorry, when they hit the goal. But that means like that they just end up making the area around the goal really desirable, but not so much the rest of the path. Um, yeah, there, there's a couple of things you could do there. The other one you could do is track the entire path. Um, 
So if I tracked the entire list all the way from the beginning, all the way as you go along as it's running, track the entire list of nodes you hit and then track back along it lame pheromone, that means that any that actually touch the goal, they're guaranteed eventually to hit the start, of course, because that's where everything starts. So that entire list would then have pheromone deposited on it and that would mean there'd be a guaranteed um, guaranteed path from the start to the goal. And if all of them are doing that and none of them are laying pheromone unless they've touched the goal and then they track back to the start and then start again without um, without laying pheromone just based on the pheromones that have been put down, then only things that touch the goal lay pheromone and anything that's trying to find the goal doesn't lay pheromone and makes decisions based on pheromone that is there, that should result in better um, generation of like the heuristic I think but I never really actually did that um, it's something that I might look into in the future I guess if I come back to this project um, well there you go I think that's pretty much everything covered really any questions and stuff um, you can ask on in the comments I'm going to post this with like a sort of a brief like paragraph or two write up on um, a blog as well so I'll link that in the description if you just found it on YouTube and I guess you probably, if you found it on there, you've probably already seen it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it interesting. And any, also, any questions about like where I got the idea from? <laughs> I, I basically came up with it off the top of my head and looked into it, and it seemed like viable and seemed like something that might work. So then I went and actually did all the research and implementation and stuff. And there you go. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And I guess that's it. Thanks.